Hello and welcome back to another Advent of Code Day. We're here for day 19. Um, so let's jump into solving it. Okay, so the input for today, I'm actually just going to open up uh, the part one um, parsing so you can see what the input looks like. So the input is a series of rules and the rules are either uh, a series of other rules. So these reference other rules in a particular order. Uh, or it's a set of rules with a pipe and then a set of other rules, or it's the letters A or B. And what these represent is kind of a tree-like structure for uh, string patterns that we have to match. And when I when I saw this, I was immediately thinking, oh, this looks like a, a regular expression, but expressed as a tree. And so that's how I went about solving this problem, is by turning this input here into regular expressions. And I'm going to show you about how I did that before. I, I don't actually have my code up, so we're going to, we're going to be resolving it. Uh, and for part one, uh, the question asks how many records fully match rule zero. Uh, and so you know this this hinted me to use full match or to use you know uh, caret and dollar sign to make sure our regular expressions match the entire thing. Uh, we'll talk about the adjusted rules in part two. This actually makes things much more complicated, but we'll t we'll talk about that when we get to it. Okay, so what I did for this, uh, let's do the parsing of the input first. This one's pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna delimit our input by this double blank line here. So we'll have rules s and uh, records s equals s dot split on backend backend. That way we get our two parts out there. Um, and for our rules, we're just gonna do a simple first pass parse where we map this string to this value here. And we'll later use that and convert it into regular expressions. So for rules, we have uh, rules equals this. And for line in rules s dot split lines, um, k comma underscore comma v equals line dot partition on colon space. That way we you know, get this part, or we have this part. And then we can say rules k equals v. So that does our rules parsing and the records parsing is really easy. Uh, records equals records s dot split lines. Uh, just convert you know this this bottom chunk down here into lines and then we can do return rules lines. So that should do the parsing part of this. Let's actually run this one dot pi. Tuple is not defined. You would think I would have dot my, got my types in in there. Lines is not. Oh right, we call it records, not lines. Uh, cool. So you can see that we've parsed our parsed our records. We actually haven't any, done any more specialized parsing here, and we'll actually do that part next as part of solving. Um, so we're we're kind of we're kind of lazily solving this out here, and we have the records. I did print that down here. Okay, so let's jump into the computation part of this because uh, that part's gonna be a little bit complicated, but I think it shouldn't be too bad. So I'm gonna define a function here that's going to turn one of these strings into a regular expression, and then we're gonna use that function recursively to get the rest of the things. So let's do uh, get re, and we're gonna take a string, and we're gonna return a regular expression string back from that. And let's uh, and we're going to use this to get reg zero equals re dot compile uh, get re zero. So we're gonna we're gonna use this and we're gonna do for line or for record in records. Uh, let's see count equals zero. If reg zero dot full match record, then count plus equals one, and then finally we return count down here. So that's the like actually algorithmic part of our of our code, but we need to implement this recursive regular expression retrieval thing. Okay, so how do I want to do this? Let's do rule s equals, and let's actually call this key. That way, it's not <laughs> so confusing here. Uh, equals rules k, um, and actually we have a couple of special cases here that we will handle first. So if rule s dot starts with a double quote. So this is what these rules look like. We know in this case we're just going to return this string back. That's that's what we're going to match for our regular expression. So we can just do return rule s dot strip uh, double quotes. 
Otherwise, we need to split apart this string and start parsing it. Uh, parts equals rule s dot split. This will get us each of the individual parts. Oh, I have to sneeze. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and uh, these parts are either going to be references to other patterns or an or. Um, and so what I thought about doing here is just wrapping all of this in parentheses, and then we have another regex here. So uh, let's actually get all of the substrings here. So we will do, um, I don't know, the inner part is joining all of the other things. Get re part for part in parts. Now we have a problem here because we're passing pipe along here. So I'm actually going to just cheat and say if k is equal to pipe, oops, then return k directly. So we're just we're just not going to specially parse down here. We probably could do you know like get re part. Oh well, let's 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 make this a little bit cleaner, I guess. Um, let's see, pipe if part equals pipe else get re part uh there that feels that feels a little bit less hacky <laughs> and then finally we're going to wrap this in parentheses so we can just do return inner part and wrap it in parentheses that way this or only applies to this particular group here and this is actually fine for things that don't contain pipes as well we can put parentheses around this and it doesn't really matter and I think this implements part one. Let's see what happens if we run this. RE is not defined. Of course, we need to import that. And we get two. And we expect it to get three. So we have something not quite right here. Um, What do we not have right here? Did I copy the input properly? Let's look at what our regular expression generated. And we'll bug from there. Uh, so p reg zero dot pattern. <laughs> okay, so four was an a, so we got a there. One was two three or three two. Uh, two is four four or five five. So a a or b b is this one right here. So that's uh, two is here. That looks good. And three is four five or five four which is a b or b a that looks good too and then three a b b a or a a b b this looks fine so i have my input let me see if i copy the input incorrectly uh we have advent of code up right here ah uh. oh should have been two why did i say it was three <laughs> okay never mind <laughs> it was right all along. I don't know why I said it was three. <laughs> My bad. Okay, so that's part one. Um, basically, recursive thing that builds a regular expression, and then, uh, you know, a, a loop over the records to count them. So part one I thought was pretty easy. I actually got points for part one because I did it so quickly. Uh, part two complicates this a little bit. We uh, ignore this pattern. This no longer helps us for part two. Part one, part two dot pi. And for part two, we have a different set of inputs. I'm actually just going to delete this input entirely. We have a different, more complicated set of input here. And there are two rule adjustments here. Um, and these introduce cycles into our regular expression graph thing. And so eight used to map to 42, and now it either maps to 42 or 42, eight. And if, if you think about this, uh, this is basically just a, a plus pattern for 42. So this matches any number, at least one 42. So you can think about this as a plus pattern. We're not actually going to use it as a plus pattern because 11 can't be represented in Python regular expressions. So uh, <laughs> but what 11 is, so 11 used to be 42 followed by 31. And now it is 42 followed by 31 or 42 followed by itself followed by 31. Um, so this, when I saw this, I was thinking this is kind of like a parenthesis matching problem. So you always have to have the same number of 42s as you have 31s. Either there's one or there's, you know, 10 42s and 10 31s. And also note that zero is eight followed by 11. So that means we have 
some number of 42s, then an equal number of 42 and 31s. Or, in other words, uh, a bunch of 42s and then fewer 31s. So that's how, that's how I solved part two. Uh, let's write the actual code for that. Um, so we're actually gonna keep the same compute function with the same regular expression retrieval, and we're gonna change how this part works down here. So instead of retrieving regular expression zero, we now just need to retrieve regular expressions 42 and 31, because those are the only ones that are used in this representation down here. So we have reg 42 equals re.compile get re42, and reg31 equals re.compile compile get re31. That retrieves our two regular expressions. Oh, we still need to have this here. But now our matching criteria is a little bit different. Basically what we need to do is match 42 as many times as we can, then match 31 as many times as we can, and then figure out whether we both match the whole string and that inequality I talked about before um, uh, is correct. And so the way I did that is I used a position to keep track of where I was tokenizing. And I first matched all of the 42s. And so we did, you know, uh, you know match equals reg 42 dot match uh, record at position. This allows you to use an offset in the string so we can move that position along. So while match uh, position plus equals one, and I'm also counting these. So count 42 equals zero. Or position, wait, 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 wait. Count 42 plus equals one. And position equals match dot end. This allows us to move stuff along. And then match equals reg 42 dot match record pause. So that allows us to match however many 42s that we want. And we're also going to do the same thing with the 31s. So let's copy and paste this. Uh, but instead of 42, we're going to use 31 here. 31, 31, 31. Okay, and at this point, we can figure out whether we have satisfied all these rules or not with that same sort of, you know, plus behavior and parenthesis matching behavior we had here before. So the first thing that we need to check is that the position is exactly the length of the record. So if pause equals len record, that means we matched everything. Uh, we also have to say that we matched at least one count 31 so that we satisfy this condition here. So I'm gonna say count 31 is greater than zero, but writing it in a silly way. <laughs> And we also know that the number of 42s has to be greater than the number of 31s because we have to match at least one here and then we have to match an equal number here. So we'll say that the count 31 is less than the count of 42 and then we'll count plus equals one. And so that should solve this. This is basically how I did this. Um, this is kind of like a specialized regular expression that can do uh, well, it's it's not possible to be a regular expression, but <laughs> it's a tokenization that makes sure that uh, the things match at the end. Uh, Python 3, and oh, we still printed this, this out. And I believe, yeah, 12 is what we expect here. I didn't actually run this for part one, but they expected for part one. Oh, maybe that was why I had it wrong at the top. Uh, but anyway, 12 of these match for part two. And that's how I implemented this. Um, if we look at algorithmic efficiency here, uh, you could, you know, memoize this if it happens to repeat things over and over. So you could get this down to being linear. I didn't bother memoizing because it was small enough of an input that it's fast enough. And this is a linear check. So, um, yeah, overall this is linear and part one is also linear. But anyway, that's uh, day 19. Uh, hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you again for day 20. Bye.